Well, I'm officially kicking off a new Pluralsight course today, and I've had a few people over the years ask about some of the setup and, you know, kind of how I do the routine as I go through it. So I'll do a real quick run through of how it gets things set up, and then we'll do an actual live take, and, and I'll show you reality. Uh, it might sound like everything goes really smooth up on Pluralsight, but uh, eh, sadly, that's not the case. Uh, if you've ever seen the movie Outtakes, you know what I'm talking about. So uh, right now I'm using something called ScreenFlow, and this is uh, some software for the Mac that I really, really like. I do pretty much all my recording on the Mac, but in this course, I'm going to be spending a lot of time in the Windows world over here. So I'll be getting to that later in the course because I need Visual Studio and stuff like that. But uh, this has a nice little recording monitor you can see right here. And uh, the recording monitor just tells you your audio levels, which I always have to change these at the end anyway. Um, I normally am not doing video, of course, for Pluralsight courses. But I'll show you the basic setup, what I have going. Uh, so I have a nice little Sony lavalier mic you can see right here. It was about 200 bucks. It was, it was fairly cheap, but it's a high quality one. Uh, it gives a really good sound. I've used it for, gosh, my last probably five or six courses on plural side and some other uh, areas. Um, over here I have, uh, it's called an Aphex 230. This is a kind of a compressor type of uh, box. It's kind of hard to see. You can see maybe the, the corner of it here, but uh, the Aphex is awesome. It kind of gives you that DJ, you know, a little bit of a deeper uh, sound. I don't actually like adding much but it adds just enough to uh, just give it a little more professional you know, quality. Uh, and then from there, you know, normally with these courses, I'm just recording the screen itself. And uh, so let's do a, do a take here. So I have my, my slides up. Let me kind of go full screen there. And uh, for the slides, basically I usually have these on my other monitor. And of course, when I start it, it'll show over here. So let me, let me go ahead and jump to the screen we're gonna start with. This would be the course prerequisites. And uh, all right, let's do a live take here. So this will be, you know, for real what it'll be in the Pluralsight course, except for I can almost guarantee, since I haven't done anything yet today, it takes me a little bit of time to get warmed up. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you kind of the trick I do to not waste a lot of time and have an efficient workflow having done, I don't even know how many hours of videos I've done over the year years, but uh, all right, here we go. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the prerequisites that are required to go through this course so that you maximize your learning and get the most out of it. So first off, we are going to be working a lot with Angular, and that means we're going to be working a lot with TypeScript. Now, if you don't know TypeScript, I'd actually recommend going and checking out some of the fundamentals out there. Uh, myself and John Papa have a course out there called TypeScript Fundamentals. And then there's a lot of great JavaScript courses, of course. So, okay, that was stupid, so then I'll start over. Now, the problem is, in fact, you're going to hit real life problem here. Sometimes I'll forget. In fact, I'll use my, my uh, I have my phone here, but I didn't have it on. Sometimes I'll record on here because then I can just stop. I don't stop the recording, but I can kind of rewind what I just last said because the problem is I don't remember where I ended off. Uh, let me go back here. Right here. And so it's hard to pick back up because what I like to do is I'll just do one slide at a time. And when I screw up that slide... I'll kind of just start over and then it's a lot easier to chop to edit after the fact and that's kind of my normal workflow so all right let's let's try that one again <clears throat> let's take a look at the prereqs that are required to get the most out of this course because i do want you to feel like you learn a lot and understood the concepts as you go through the different modules in the course so to start off we are going to be working a lot with typescript now, if you have a background in JavaScript, that'll certainly help you out, but you do need to know at least the fundamentals of the TypeScript language because we'll be using that with Angular. Now, this is not an Angular fundamentals course. There's actually several courses up on Pluralsight.com for that. And so you can go check those out if you need a foundation in Angular. I'm gonna jump right in and kind of assume that you already know what a component is, what a service is, and how all those work, but I'll be building those out throughout the course as we communicate with our RESTful service. Now, the final thing is on the server side, we're gonna be building some RESTful services or what Microsoft would call some web APIs. And we'll be using, of course, C-sharp and ASP.NET Core. 
Now I'm gonna show you two ways we can get this going. You can get it going on Mac or Windows, or if you even wanna run on Linux, you could do it there too, but I'm also gonna have a Docker option, but Docker is not gonna be required as prereq knowledge for this particular course. So those are some of the core things that you need to know to get the most out of the course. All right, and then I'll end up stopping. I'm gonna keep recording for now, but I'll end up stopping and then I'll, I'll do my edits and chop. Now that take, uh, to be honest, was a little bit wordy in my opinion. And so my usual workflows, I'll go through it. You know, sometimes I'll nail it the first time. Um, a lot of times I don't. In fact, I'd say most of the time I don't. Um, but I've gotten pretty good at, you know, when I screw up one sentence, a lot of people, when they do this, they'll completely stop and restart the whole thing and the recording. And I used to get really frustrated, like pissed, uh, when that would happen. Cause I know I'd have to stop. And the trick is don't stop. Um, because there's no video, which I mean, you have video, but there won't be in the real course. It's really easy to, uh, go in and just, you know, kind of pause for a second and then redo that sentence or that word that you screwed up or whatever it may be. Now, sometimes, like I said, I can't remember what I said previously. So then I'm like, son of a, you know, I got to start all over. Um, but that's kind of how it works. So I'm going to do one more take here and then we'll kind of wrap this one up. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the prereqs that are required to get the most out of this course as you go through it, because I do want to, ah, all right, real life there. Let's take a look at the prereqs that you need to know to get the most out of this course, because by the time you're done with it, I do want you to feel like you learned a lot and then you understand the core concepts that are in the course. So we're gonna be working a lot with TypeScript. Now, if you have a background in JavaScript, that's certainly gonna help you out, but you do need to know the TypeScript fundamentals and there are some courses on Pluralsight.com where you can get those if you need to. I also am expecting that you know the Angular fundamentals. This means you know what a component is. You know how to write a component class and add a decorator. You know what a service is, things like that. Now, even if you didn't, I'm gonna be building out some components and services as we go throughout the course, but to get the most out of the course and focus on really the end goal, which is integrating Angular with a RESTful service, you'll wanna already know the Angular fundamentals. And then finally, for the server side, we're gonna be working with C-sharp and ASP.NET Core, and uh, you're gonna be able to, and you're gonna be able to use and you're going to be able to use that. <laughs> See, and this is where I go, son of a gun. Let me try it again. And you're going to be able to use those on Windows, Mac, or even on Linux if you want. Now, I'm going to show how to get it up and going with Windows and Mac, but then I'm also going to have a Docker option that you'll be able to use. But Docker won't be a prereq to get through this course. So TypeScript, Angular Fundamentals, and then Fundamentals of C-Sharp and ASP.NET Core will, so knowing TypeScript fundamentals, the Angular fundamentals, and some of the basics of C Sharp and ASP.NET Core will certainly help you get the most out of this course. Now, if you don't meet those prereqs, as already mentioned, there's a lot of great courses up on Pluralsight.com that will help get you started. Okay, so there'd be my, my second take. Um, that's kind of my workflow that you know I go through there. Uh, not real exciting, obviously, so I'm not going to keep recording too much longer here, but that would be, you know, like my, uh, my first and second take. And then what I'll do is as I go through and edit it, I won't show that process, but I'll then take this and go into ScreenFlow. And uh, it basically inside of ScreenFlow, you can do all your chopping of your video and things like that. Um, and in doing that, I can chop out, you know, ums and uhs and stuff like that. So like I said, when you hear it on Pluralsight.com, it, it probably sounds a little more fluid. Uh, now you see real life. Um, and, that, and that actually wasn't too bad of a screw up. Uh, I, several actually I screwed up. But in uh, once I get going into more of the technical stuff, I mean, this is pretty high level fluffy stuff here. It gets a little more tricky. Um, and so you end up doing, you know, multiple takes and all that stuff. So anyway, uh, that's how I, I do my stuff. So hopefully for those that were either interested in doing your own videos or uh, just want to know kind of what goes into making these Pluralsight courses, that'll give you a little insight. So what I'm gonna be doing is I go through the different modules in the course, this integrating Angular with ASP.NET Core, uh, RESTful Services course that is this one. Uh, I'll try to do a little 
screen captures and a little bit of this video just to kind of give you an update on where things are going and uh, and you can see the bloopers along the way.